15, yeah. a resolution to approve the amendments to the City of Omaha Park rules. The public hearing for item number 15 is today, or if there are any proponents. Fifteen. Yeah. Oh, proponents. Opponents. Proponents. Proponents. Yes. For it. The board again? No. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes. Are 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 there any proponents? No. Okay. Opponents. Thank you. I'm Avery Schwer. This is my wife, Marilyn. Together we have ridden over 300. Address, please. Oh, excuse me? Address? Address. 6454 Woolworth Avenue. Thank you. Omaha, Nebraska. My wife and I have ridden over 300 miles in the last two months on the Omaha City Parks trails. In this resolution, the number 15, it's, it's a resolution to ban class two and class three bikes on the trails. I don't have any problem banning class three uh, bikes. Class three bikes are fast bikes, and, you know, as far as more powerful. Class two bikes are physical assist bikes. I'm 68 years old. A couple years ago, I had a severe bicycle accident on narrow tires. It was a Trek Soho bike. I can't do narrow tires anymore on bicycles. I can do wider tires, but because of the increased resistance, they need to be electrical assisted. The reason we do over 300 miles on the bike trails is because as older people, we can go up the hills easier in this type of thing. It's not to go fast. We never pass anybody. <laughs> Either does any other class two bike riders that we see on the trail. The class three we haven't really seen on the trail, but going and restricting class two bicycles would really be something that would really have a negative impact on our enjoyment of the city parks and the trails. We love them. And so bottom line, I ask you to strike the class two from this resolution with regard to restricting it and banning it. And I think it reflects, you know, as far as what's going on across the country uh, with going in the acceptance of, of the uh, pedal assisted bikes as we grow older. Yes, and it's just, um, it's a great way to get exercise. Otherwise, I wouldn't be out on the trails, um, probably. And so, and whenever we have been out there, um, the people that are just on regular bikes, they go whizzing by us. <laughs> and you come around curves, they go whizzing by us. We're the slow ones. Um, and so, <laughs> please do not be in a class two, class two bike because it's a great way to get fresh air and exercise because I'm 67. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are there any other opponents? Okay. Sure. Yep. My name is Michael Gann. I live at 9241 Madison Street and uh, I'm here in opposition to uh, item number 15, specifically on the e-bikes. Um, I see where they will allow class one e-bikes. And it's my understanding the difference between a class one and a class two is one is pedal assist, where it, it will measure the resistance against what you're pedaling on. And the class two has a thumb throttle uh, on it. Same horsepower limitation, same wattage, same voltage. Everything's identical. Uh, I'm not sure why the e-bike ban is going in place, but uh, I don't know if it's safety issues or not. I don't know. I, I, I tried to get a hold of uh, Park and Recreations, but uh, apparently they're busy uh, today. And if we ban e-bike two, but allow e-bike one, the class ones, that makes no sense because they're identical bikes, just different means of putting the bike into motion on there. So I hope that this is tabled, at least pulled off consent agenda today. More discussions obviously needed before we proceed on this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? And, it, and if you are an opponent, if you could come down closer. Thank you. Uh, Scott Blake, 2316 North 52nd Street. <clears throat> I am strongly opposed to rule number 17 on the attachment titled motorized vehicles on the trail. 
which states class two and three electric bicycles will not be allowed on city trails. So this is a poorly written rule submitted by the new acting parks director. First, the rule is completely unenforceable. Can you tell the difference between a class one and a class two grip? Now imagine being a police officer hundreds of feet away trying to see if a bike going 25 miles an hour has a twist throttle. Furthermore, it is literally impossible to differentiate between a class one and a class three e-bike by simply looking at it. They are identical. This is a sloppy rule change to help city prosecutors. But the e-bike classification is nowhere to be found in the Omaha Municipal Code <clears throat> or Nebraska state statutes. Second, this confusing rule would discourage people from riding bikes. And what better way for Omaha to celebrate Bike to Work Week, which is this week, and Car Free Day, which is today, <laughs> than by trashing, trashing this regressive bike policy. Well, the Omaha Planning Department recently showed a major increase in the number of people riding on bikes and trails during the pandemic. And even, even with an increase in riders, I have not heard of anyone crashing their cr class three e-bike on the trail. This is, a, this is a solution to a problem that does not exist. Third, banning e-bikes will not make the trails any safer. There's an exercise app I use called Strava. It's like Facebook for athletes. Cyclists use the app to track how far and how fast they have ridden, and then our stats get posted on a public dashboard. I did a quick glance at the Keystone Trail. They show a human-powered cyclist, not an e-bike, going 36 miles per hour on the trail last month. That's a regular pedal bike going way faster than a class one e-bike is allowed. And all that's okay under the new rules. So the, as an example, the speedometer of my car goes up to 150 miles an hour. And while I've never driven that fast, I'm still allowed to drive my SUV in a school zone. We don't ban cars for having the potential to go fast. We shouldn't ban e-bikes for the same. I don't know if, this, if the single item on the attachment can be struck or if the entire agenda item needs to be voted down, but either way, the Parks Department needs to submit a better worded, better worded addition to the rules. In closing, I would like to thank Sarah Johnson for finding this obscure rule change on the last page of the attachment. She'll talk more about the strain this will put on our already overworked police and how banning e-bikes discriminates against people with disabilities. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Johnson, 2316 North 52nd Street. Pete, we've kind of blown you up about this lately. I appreciate you taking the time to respond to everybody. Um, I'm also here in strong opposition to item number 15 with updated park rules, specifically opposed to, as everybody's saying, class three. I'm wondering if everybody understands all the different classifications. That's kind of something I'm happy to go into. Um, okay, so first of all, yes, happy bike to work day. Uh, kind of funny that today is the day that the League of American Bicyclists has declared, and yet here we are ironically talking about removing rights for people on certain types of bikes. Um, other communities globally are quickly adapting in a necessary but positive way, as Gray said, positive opportunity. Um, to the challenges of the pandemic with slow street initiatives, pop-up bike lanes, relaxed restrictions, and just generally more encouragement to safely get outside. I've let, yet to see anything like that happening locally, which is upsetting as well. Um, trying to put my thoughts on this e-bike ban into a three-minute segment is pretty daunting considering I've spent the last 18 years in the bike industry talking to people every day about bikes, specifically electric assist bikes. Um, I actually owned a shop in Benson I shut it down last year due to health reasons, the same health reasons that put me on an electric bike, so I feel particularly qualified as an expert uh, to speak about this. Rode my e-bike down here today. Um, sold a bunch of bikes to people that had health issues. Um, they already kind of covered that, but um, mental health is something that we have brought up a lot lately, as it should, because it's a huge crisis for our community. The mental benefits of riding a bike can't be overemphasized. Um, so anyway, a few specifics. The definition, again, is one thing that I'm, I'm wondering where you're coming up with the definitions. Are we just using bike manufacturers' definitions? Because um, from 2015, the state re 
kind of refined what their definition of a bicycle is. I don't know if you've had a chance to review this. I'm happy, again, to answer any questions. Um, but they specifically define it. Um, basically, the classifications of two and three don't really make any sense when you look at the state law. So that's a problem that I have. Um, class one and two, again, as is brought up already, only 20 miles an hour. Class three is 28. Fine, we can talk about that later. But I really think that generally, normal bicycles like motorless and class one and class two get grouped together, and that makes sense to me. But class three being grouped together with class two doesn't make sense. Um, so we could go more into definitions, but um, for now, again, with the Strava segment, people on regular bikes speed past me on my e-bike on the trail. So if, if speed and safety are the concern, which is valid and great, we need to talk about speed limits on the trail, and I think that would really be a better first step and kind of more educational rather than punishing and controlling, which is what a lot of our conversations these days, especially as it pertains to enforcement, tend to end up with some, some gray areas. We don't need to give them more reasons to get into unfortunate situations. Um, again, just another Omaha solution, trying to put more control into police and prosecution rather than just informing the people that probably don't understand it to begin with. So information over enforcement. Um, the next issue I have is it's kind of an ableist and classes policy, completely unacceptable as we would probably all agree. Um, most of the bikes that I sold were class two because they were cheaper than class one. Class one is the pedal assist. It's real sleek. You don't have to worry about any buttons or anything. So it just is a little bit more pricey. Class two, more affordable. So we're just instantly telling all those people, unless you can afford it, you can't be on the trails. That's too bad. Um, also, as my friends behind me said, when you have health issues, it's really sometimes nice and helpful to have that little boost that a throttle will give you. So um, I could go on for for a really long time about this, and I'm happy to talk with any of you more in depth about it um, because I'm going to go ahead say I'm the authority on this specific information just because it's what I've spent decades of my life dedicated to. Um, the, the final concern I have, and this again is something that we see throughout Omaha, whether it's related to bikes or anything else, is Omaha has a communication problem. This is something that I contacted the NRD who builds the trails, ALAC, the Active Living Advisory Committee, Bike Walk Nebraska, the Chamber of Commerce, their Connect Go guy specifically, Smart Cities coordinator, who's working on the Harney Street cycle track, which just got delayed again. Um, MAPA, Mode Shift Omaha. Everybody that I could think of that maybe would know about this, they were all like, what? So we need to, we need to communicate better is really what we need to do. And I think that I, what it's looking like, and I'm grateful and hopeful that we'll all understand that it's important for us to come together and have a more informed conversation about this, because as it's written, it's just really not OK. Um, so yeah, I've spoken a lot, as I tend to do, but um, I think that we should focus on improving Omaha's communication plans rather than writing policies around an issue that doesn't really exist. So happy to answer any questions. I also have um, People for Bikes has a nice little one pager on like Nebraska specific legislation. Um, and then also I brought Bosch is the motor system that's on my bike, um, but just one of the examples that actually breaks down the different classifications for class one, two, and three. And again, I think the thing that's really just most important to emphasize is class one and two both go 20 miles an hour. Class three is the one that should be maybe the outlier if there, if there needs to be. But again, total bike nerd, happy to answer all your questions. Appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you. I will, yeah. Can we have copies of those? Yes, Do you mind? I'm gonna. If I didn't leave them with the clerk. She'll make sure that all the copies are distributed to all of us. Okay, awesome. And you don't have to do any more work. Oh, I'm happy to. You just let me know. But thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. I'll do it for you. Are there any sure. other propon opponents? Yeah, hi. I'm Olaf Burke, 601 North 87th Street, which is near Highway Cass, near the Keystone. And I've heard so many arguments, I thought it didn't have much to add, but there are two things. Uh, one is a personal account. Uh, when I moved here, I actually stopped biking because Omaha was not a biking city at all, and that's 22 years ago. And uh, the Exarban area didn't exist. Now I go to Exarban with my wife. I have a cargo bike. I put it on the back because she doesn't bike. It's a class two bicycle, and uh, we are pretty happy on the Keystone Trail. There's no racing at all. Um, I go shopping at Aldi's. Sometimes we drop by at Kohl's. Natural grocers on the way if you cross Man's Warehouse. The Keystone is the lifeline for bicyclists. 
uh, of course, we go jogging or I go jogging and then uh, we walk together in the morning. That's uh, recreational. But the bike for us is purely transportational. And if you take out the e-bikes, what is left? I tried to go to Creighton. I'm, a, I'm banned to use residential streets. If I want to go west, I can because Dodge is only for cars. You can't use a bike to cross Dodge and 680. If you're a pedestrian, I think it's illegal to walk in the median. That's the only way to cross. And who can just bike up to Blondo to go west? The e-bike can, but if you have a muscle bike, you think twice before you take your bike and then you're back in the car. Um, what else was, oh, the category on motorized bikes. I don't want e-bikes to be thrown into the same category as combustion engine motorized bicycles or scooters. I've seen one on the Keystone, and I could smell the exhaust for a minute. That was between Blondo and Cass. So e-bikes are a whole different group. And as another uh, person pointed out, muscles get you much faster than the legal limit of e-bikes and speed. So it's mostly the courtesy among people on the trail to announce yourself that makes for very smooth uh, sharing of that roadway. And uh, I guess that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Uh, you're all right. Councilman Festerson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I'm a member of the uh, City Council's Parks Committee, and when I first saw this agenda item I pop up on our agenda this week, I did flag it and thought, you know, this is the kind of thing that does need to come through the Parks Committee first and have some discussion on. Certainly the bike portion of this, which we just heard about, but there are some other items in here too that are proposed to be new that uh, also need to have some discussion. So. I had placed on our on our agenda this morning with um, Mr. Lindner, and we had a discussion about this, and we all agreed uh, to that effect, and all agreed that this item should be laid over for more conversation and more work. And about that same time, as Ms. Johnson alluded to, I had a lot of input from bike advocates across the community too, which I appreciated um, because they did flag this item for us, and clearly it does need more thoughtfulness and more discussion, more communication. And I agree um, that the class two bikes um, need to come out of this policy and should be uh, allowed on our city trail systems as a mode of transit and um, exercise and one that is growing in popularity and one that, that in fact is being expanded by a city program at the moment, uh, B-Cycle. So it wouldn't make any sense to prohibit um, that. Um, but important that we understand and educate ourselves about these classifications and what they really are and what these types of bikes really do. Um, and I don't think there's a great understanding of that yet, but we're getting, we're getting there today, I think. And I do have some of the attachments from Ms. Johnson that I can share to, to council members uh, in that respect. Um, so Mr. Lindner, I might have you come down just for a minute, if you would. Good afternoon, Jake Linder, 1819 Farnham. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to engage you a little bit in, and um, acknowledge our conversation this morning on this topic. And I think your willingness to, to engage on this issue and talk through this more. And um, I think in our conversation, the thought by the Parks Department was just, you know, you wanted to be sensitive to safety and maybe speed on these trails. Correct. But I do think you're flexible uh, to looking into these classifications more and, um, and the, um, desire to move something like a class two out of a policy like this. Absolutely. Okay, great. And then I think um, the greater point is also important, which is we have a lot of entities now that should be focused on these type of issues and should be promoting more active living and biking opportunities and pedestrian opportunities, but it does still feel very disjointed uh, across the city and with those in the private sector that are working on this too to the effect, or I guess exhibited by today, which is what seems to be a one sentence policy in our park rules um, was unbeknownst to any of those groups and didn't have any conversation. And, and I understand the concern about that and I agree with that concern that we need to do a better job on these issues as a city. So I think we're in agreement, this will be laid over today. 
I'll let Mr. Harding make that, that motion, but I think it should be sufficient time that then allows Mr. Lindner and bike advocates and committee members to sit down together and discuss this and walk, walk it through and make sure we have these classifications consistent with how they appear other, in other places and state law and such. And in my opinion, remove class two from being prohibited in this policy. Um, and I will say Ms. Johnson is, a, is a, uh, an authority on this topic. Um, I purchased a bike from her in the past and I know she knows what she's talking about. So I would, I would definitely include her in that conversation. Um, with that, I'll yield the floor for now. Council Member Harding, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, basically, what I, I was going to say has been said by uh, Council Member Festerson as well, too. And I know that the intent was certainly, at least as it related to uh, the paragraph 17, which was on motorized vehicles on trails, was certainly a safety issue. Uh, but clearly, and we've discovered in this process that we do need uh, we do need more investigation, more clarification as to uh, how to how to word that and what what to actually have or allow on on the trails. Additionally, we, we also had uh, some in-depth conversation on uh, paragraph 14, which related to drones. And I'm a little surprised no one was down here to talk about that today. But um, so in our discussion at, at our Parks Committee meeting, Council Member Melton and Festerson and I clearly understood that this was something that needed some more uh, investigation and work. So I'll make a motion, um, and I know Councilmember Melton wants to say some words as well, but I'll, I'll make a motion to, to lay this over until uh, October 20th, which should give us sufficient time to continue working on this and come up with the right language, not only as it relates to motorized vehicles on trails, but uh, drones that I mentioned, and there were a couple other things that still need a little work. Council Member Melton, you are recognized. Thank you, and I won't repeat what Council Council Member Festerson and Council Member Harding had said, but I have to say, I mean, it was it wasn't until this morning that I even knew the difference between a class one, two, and three e bike I had literally had no idea. So I I also want to let the people know, just to let all of you know, um, we saw this at the same time you did. Really, we weren't aware that it was on here. This was was kind of put on. So. Again, there may be some lack of communication kind of in regards to uh, maybe things coming on our, our agenda from our departments, and that's something I think we can work out in our committee uh, to make that better. But there are a number of different things, and I, I think everybody made good points. I, and I, I think also it might be, would I like to talk to the people that use the trail, not only the e-bike people, but regular bikers, um, is there a danger? Do we need speed limits? Maybe not even for the e-bike people, but maybe if somebody is going whizzing by the two of you at 36 miles per hour, that might be somewhat dangerous for you. So, and I don't know if you can do speed limits on bikes or I, and I don't know any of that information. So I definitely support laying this over so that we have a better understanding. And also I don't think that what we should be doing is micro targeting what to change during this meeting. We should be having those discussions and doing all of that with other people and not just striking things here on the floor. It's not as productive. So I would even be in support if we don't have this all worked out and with all the different numbers of groups and people that want to maybe have some input in this. I mean, I'd be fine continuing it past October 22nd even. Um, just because I want to make sure if we're doing it, we're doing it right. And again, there are some other things in here, like for drones. Um, I was surprised nobody is here from Standing Bear, um, from Hawks Field, which is out there because they actually do drone training and it's a good safe place. And, and so there's some, there's some other issues in, in some of these that I think people don't know about either. So I definitely support laying it over um, just to make sure. We also have, there's a no pets allowed in any city sports fields, complexes, courts, or golf courses, which I don't think you should bring your dog golfing, but maybe there's a lot of people that bring their dogs just to sit on the side in the back outfield to watch their kids' baseball game, and I don't know if we want to necessarily ban that. So I think there's a lot of things in here that we really need to have some discussion about. I do support 
banning the bounce houses, though. And I'm glad nobody was here to object to that because I think that they are very dangerous and I really don't want to see those. So there's a lot of good things in here, too. And I appreciate the work of the Parks Department and kind of clarifying some of these things. But we just need a little more work on, I think, some of the other things that maybe we just didn't have. We just need to be a little more educated on, on some of the things that are going in here and then change maybe some of the language. So, so we're, we are listening and we will work with you. And um, if you want to email any of us your contact information, I know you gave your names and addresses, but all of our emails are, are available. If you just Google Omaha City Council, you can click each one of us or, or click us all. Give us contact information because I'd be more than happy to just shoot out maybe what our final anticipated version is, at least to the people who came today, just so that you had the opportunity to look at it um, ahead of ahead of the vote. So just send, shoot an email and we'll make sure that we kind of get you on that on that list. Here's after all these discussions, here's what we think might work. And because you took the time to come down here, all of you that did, just make sure we have your contact information so that we can make sure we we get that out to you for comment before it goes on our agenda. Because I really do appreciate you taking the time to come down. Thank you. you <laughs> yeah, Ms. Johnson, you I can't I know I can't barely see you over there, but I, I'm including you even though I can't see you. Thank you. Councilman Harding, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I think I did, but maybe I didn't. I wanted to make sure part of that motion was to continue the public hearing as well, too. And if if I have to Okay, thank you. Okay, so the there's been a motion and a second to continue the public hearing and to lay this over until October 20th. Roll call. Paul. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 17, an ordinance to approve 